September 11th of 2001, mm -hmm. I was in Tampa, Florida. I was living there at the time. And uh, I was home and then went to, I used to work at the University of South Florida. Mm. So I went to the university there and then came back home and that was it. So pretty normal, you yeah. know, nothing, really nothing out of the unusual yet. Okay, so what happened is almost 10 years ago, almost to right now, Ten, on June 19th of 2002, I was flying back into the U.S. and I was taken in by the FBI there and they asked me all sorts of questions. Where were you on this day? What are you doing? Who pays for your trips? Who, why, why do you travel so much? You know, all sorts of little details. And it was on the 9th, it was, uh, so they asked me, uh, where were you the 11th, where were you the 10th? We read about six months of my calendar that I had on a little, uh, palm that I would look things up and uh, so what had happened was that someone had reported to the to the uh, police that an Arab man fled on September uh, 12th who was uh, hiding explosives and never mind I'm not Arab never mind there were no explosives never mind it wasn't the 12th or the 11th it didn't matter you know it's this culture of if you see something say something which is a very big saying that we use in the US Unfortunately, if you see something, even if it's wrong, it doesn't matter. Just say something anyway, because sometimes ignorance is uh, a little too common. Uh, so, you know, the people that reported me, I, I kind of know who they are. I don't really know for 100%, but I'm pretty sure because there were only a few people that even knew I had a storage space. And they're not mean people. They're not, they're not, they weren't after me. They weren't out to get me. They were just dumb, ignorant people. And that's what happened. But, and I understand that when it's on an individual basis, you're going to run into people like that all the time. That's, that's just part of life. But when a country, particularly your own country, takes on that ignorance as the basis for national policy, it becomes a very scary situation. And that's what I had to live through for the next six months. You know, I'm not even sure if this is art or if this was an is or how it became. Because I think a lot of what I went through, uh, the last thing on my mind when going through an FBI investigation is, hey, this is new art. <laughs> you don't think like that. No, that's like, the, that's like the furthest thing from your mind. But really what happens is, it's a very pragmatic thing that I was doing. I, I would tell the FBI where I was, what I was doing, and I would constantly tell them. And, I would, and then I turned it into this software that I wrote, that I, and this is years before Facebook and, and Foursquare and Twitter and all of these types of social media services that we just use on a daily basis. We don't even think of them as anything else. So um, it's kind of interesting, and I think, I'm not sure if I, if this ever was, I mean maybe, you know, I guess because I am an artist, I do, I make art. And I think this is the kind of a reaction that an artist would actually have, rather than the average person. And I think other people would have a different outlet. And I think being an artist, this is how I dealt with my situation in trying to understand it. So every few moments, I timestamp my life. Uh, so there's a record of I was here, there, there, there. there. There's, it's all evidence. It's these huge piles of evidence. And the FBI has all of it. I mean, that's, you know, we, I want them to have it. But there's an interesting thing that happens in this whole process is that, the, the, obviously I have an FBI file, but how thorough is, is that file? How complete is the FBI's data? And in, in the case of the FBI, we do, I, I don't know, because it would take so long to actually get the paperwork from the FBI and find out exactly what, what they have. And, they, and, and you know, it's too big of a system, so maybe they don't have every detail. But I wanted to make sure that they have every detail. So another thing that's happening is by me giving you the information directly, the information that the FBI has has no value because the reason the F because everyone else has it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it devalues currency. It's borrowing a very simple economics model and taking all this information and just putting it so publicly that my information that the FBI has has no value whatsoever. Now, ironically, when I first started this project, People thought I was crazy. People said, why, why do you want to tell everyone everything? Why would you want to post pictures of where you are and photos of every details? 
It's funny, you know, like now there's a, almost a billion people on Facebook alone doing this. A billion. That's one sixth of the world's population. That's a pretty frightening statistic when you look at it in those numbers. So, is it still art if a billion people are doing this? Uh, I don't know, uh, but I think, it's, I think it's a way I'm going about it is very different because there's really no reason for me to be doing this because there's so many applications and so many phones and so many things that automatically do this. <laughs> but again, being an artist, you tend to look at things differently. And in my case, this is where this work comes in. So this is the latest version of this project. I mean, the pro it's an ongoing project. I'm generating data every day. Every few moments, there's another new thing that goes up and another new thing goes up. Who knows when, you know? I don't even think about it anymore. I just do it. It's just part of my life. I mean, you know, it's kind of like when we first started texting. We, we, you know, like, oh, wow, why would you have to hit all those numbers to write just a few words? And now we don't even think about it. Now, you know, you just, you just take out your phone, you just write, and you can have a conversation, talk, and put your phone back. It's just part of life now. So do you use social network? Yeah, yeah, I use Everything. it all the time, yeah. So, so yeah. Which social Facebook? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not on Twitter, believe it or not. Okay. And uh, I'm not really sure, well, I, uh, yeah, one of my things is that I, I, uh, I think because the information that I post is so cryptic and so difficult to understand okay. that without the analysis of it, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if I were to be on Twitter. I'm not sure what I would post. Maybe I would just post like random GPS locations. <laughs> I mean, maybe something of that type, or just. Uh, I mean, when you look at the photos that I'm posting, they're incredibly boring photos, and they're incredibly banal images of just. It could be. They could be anywhere, but if you've seen that place, you know exactly where it is, and it can't be anywhere else. It has to be that one specific point. And uh, so, there, so there is this incredible specificity in the image and an incredible broad generalization. It really could be anywhere. Any of those images could be anything, and it could really be anyone. So that's where it gets all really interesting with putting it all together. And I'm really excited about the way the images are so specific, but they're completely generic pieces of evidence. Yeah. So I think, I think one of the things is that when we're generating so much information, all of us, and all of us, for, for, for the first time in history, we actually have just as many producers of information as consumers of information. And, and a lot of us still haven't fully caught on to that. The fact that it's no longer a one-way street. It's no longer that someone is taking information, so, so someone, it, someone is, is taking things from you, but you could also take things from other places and you could also turn it around. You could also hold up a mirror. And particularly in the idea of data and information. Just so, yeah, so my thing, so I've, I've come up with a very counterintuitive process of possibly looking at, well, the way you actually keep your privacy is that you don't be private and you become completely open. And by me being completely open, I actually live a very anonymous life. I live a very private life. It's I mean, kind of protection. It is, okay. because there's so much noise. There's so much noise, you do not, you, you can't pick out the parts that are important from the parts that are not important. But that's because I'm giving you everything. And your job is to filter that information. And you start to filter it and then you give up. Like at a certain point, you say, like, I don't need to see any more. I've seen enough. But I'm saying, no, no, but you need to see more. <laughs> I'm like that person that just gives you more and more and more. You know, I'm so helpful. I'm completely unhelpful. <laughs> so I think cooperation is a, it's an interesting way of looking at it. So sometimes if you go far enough to one end of the, of the spectrum, you end up in the other. And that's exactly what's happening. And in a way, when you look at this work with the bars, with the stripes, with the, it really talks about that. It talks about the signal to noise. I mean, it's about these bars, the test patterns in television. It's you use it to, to calibrate information. You use it to make sure that the signal is accurate. So it really is about signal processing. But at the same time, it also becomes these images. And, and when you're looking at these tiny little strips and the images are moving through it, it also talks about a little bit about the history of the moving image. Because way in the early, about, I don't know, two, three hundred years ago, with, with those slices and the animations that you would see through the, the zeotropes, 
Yeah, so it's, it, it, so I'm actually doing this incredibly archaic form of animation using this 21st century technology with mobile media. <laughs> so it also, it, 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 there are a lot of historic, uh, ex a, a historic um, um, aspects to the work that comes through. Uh, so, and then it also looks at a timekeeping, it looks at calibration of information, uh, filtering of, of signal, filtering of noise. So it all comes together in this work over here. And, and uh, it's, been a, it's been a great experience working with Karen and working here. And uh, it's been, we've had uh, an incredible last week putting this together. They were with me every moment of my life for six months, and then they just one day decided to pack up and leave. And I'm, I'm, I just, I'm not ready for that kind of separation. You know, you, you know, you know, someone like that. You know, like you're not interested in them, and they just keep bothering you. It's like, no, no, it's okay. Just leave me alone. And they just keep, they keep, like, coming into your life, and then you, and then eventually you kind of get used to them in their in your life, and then all of a sudden they decide they don't want to be in your life anymore. That's not right. So I've decided that you know, one of these days I'll get over it, I'll move on. But I'm not ready for that kind of separation yet.